How's it going guys? Welcome back for another video. Today's going to be a little bit of a longer one because we're going to be taking a look at how to animate with Blender Grease Pencil. I've been doing a lot of tips and trick videos and I realize I haven't really done a video about how I animate and how I get started on my animations with the Blender Grease Pencil. So let's hop right into it. So to start things off, I'm using Blender version uh, 2.91 and the only reason that I use this one is because it has some updated bug fixes um, that I was experiencing with my Mac. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. So we can start if we want to by selecting the 2D, gen or the 2D animation uh, preset, but we'll start with the general just to show how to get everything set up and get it kind of customized. So we'll delete the default cube and light and we'll select our camera and we'll zero out the position and we will make it so it's looking right down the Y axis. Next up, we will add our grease pencil object and I like to do blank. I typically keep my grease pencil stroke uh, five meters away on the Y axis. Now we'll come into our tabs. We'll add a 2D animation tab Press zero to go into camera view, zoom out so we can see our frame, and we'll go to um, non-rendered view. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the um, basic setup that it, Blender gives you. So by default, it has a radius or pen radius of 20 and a strength of 0.6. So that's the opacity is 60%. Usually I like to put that all up to 100 and de activate the pressure sensitivity and um, you it's up to you whether you keep the pressure sensitivity on for the pen lately I haven't been using it because it's just the style I've been looking for to start things off we'll add a new layer and the way that I do things is I keep my color layer and my uh, outline layer separate and so that's the first thing that I do whenever I make an animation so I'll call this color and I'll make a layer that goes on top of it called outline and now we will add some basic uh, materials. The first one will be just an outline material, which will be a black outline. So we already have stroke selected with a base color of black. Next up, I'll add a black fill. And here we want to disable the stroke and only select fill. And we want, once again, we're gonna keep it black. So the main reason that I like to use materials instead of vertex color um, is because with materials you can it's a lot easier to edit the color after uh, If you realize that you've made a mistake or if you want to do some minor editing than with vertex editing Which actually is impossible and I'll show you what I mean by that So if I add a color here and we'll just call this skin say we're making a, a person We'll make this some sort of skin color And I draw a circle here then you can see that if I don't like the color of that skin, I can change it to be whichever color I'd like. Now, if we were to have done it the other way and come up here and selected vertex color instead of material color, and then did a color, we are now stuck with um, this color and we can't, change, uh, we can't change the color of this stroke that we've already made. So once we've done our stroke and we change color, then we're stuck with that color. So some people don't like the brightness of the default canvas. If you want to change that, it's very easy. We just select this drop down here, come down to viewport, and we can change this to be whichever color you want. Another thing that people ask a lot is uh, how you can get different brushes besides just the, just the default pen. And to do that, in Blender, if you have Blender 2.91 or later, I believe, you can come here and we see that we have just our default set Nothing very special, but if we click this drop down and select download and import texture brush pack, then we can see 16 brushes installed. And now if we click here, we'll see that we have a large variety of different types of brushes to choose from. Now as a note, uh, if you're using these and you're not in rendered view, it'll just look like, uh, like a pen or a marker. 
you have to come into rendered view to actually see the texture. Now the final thing that we're going to want to change in this scene is in the object properties tab and we're going to come down to visibility and deselect use lights for the grease pencil object. If we use light then it'll basically treat the grease pencil as like an image on plane kind of thing and it'll be using the lights to determine where it should be light and dark and in most cases uh, it's just not really useful for 2D animation. So once we have a custom default file we can go ahead and save it as whatever we want by coming under here, save as, and I already have a blank 2D animation and so I don't need to make a new one. So to start things off, we will look at the timeline as this is the most essential part of understanding how the grease pencil animation works. So if I draw a face in this frame, oh, we'll see that under the outline layer, a new keyframe has been made. Now we can, we can delete this color one because it's not there yet, but it'll de by default, it'll make a new keyframe every single time you make a uh, new layer. Keyframes with the Blender Grease Pencil will stay active until a new keyframe appears. So there's no need to set the duration of each of these keyframes. By default, it stays on as long as there's not a new keyframe. Now if I come maybe 10 frames later and I draw something new, then we'll see that at, right at that frame, it switches over to the next one. Now if you want to uh, just have a completely blank frame and you want to stop the previous keyframe, there's a quick shortcut and that is shift I and that'll insert a new blank keyframe. And so now you can see that uh, the previous keyframe endures all the way until the new blank keyframe and then it disappears. Next up, let's talk about the different tools that Blender has by default. So we've been using the draw tool uh, but Blender also has a fill tool, an erase tool, a tint tool, a cutter tool, and then a variety of shape tools. So let's look next at the fill tool. So if we go to color now, our color layer, uh, then we can fill in the head by just clicking on the inside of the head and the inside of the ears. Now that required three different clicks in order for me to do that. If I want to fill in something a little bit quicker and I have this layer isolated, what I can do is I can come up to the minus sign, and if I click anywhere outside of the head, then it'll only fill the inside. And in this case, since we did had too much of a gap between the ear and the head, it didn't quite recognize it, so we'll have to finish it up there. Next tool is the erase tool, and I usually keep this on point. Stroke mode would delete entire strokes, and so unless you're really trying to erase quickly, I don't recommend using that. The next tool is the tint tool. This can be used to uh, add color over your drawings. This is similar to the vertex paint and I just don't really use it very much. The cutter tool is a very handy one. This basically trims off any excess when on any stroke. So if we come back to outline, use our outline material and draw like a curly cue like this and we come to the cutter tool, we can cut off these loose ends by quick, uh, very quickly using the cutter tool and that's its main purpose. Finally, we have the shape tools. So these are just basic line tools, um, polyline tools, and arc and square and circle. So next up, let's talk about onion skin. Onion skins are a common tool that is found in most animation software that allows you to basically see previous or uh, next frames in order to better draw in-betweens. And if we select the onion skin toggle button there, <clears throat> then we will see that we can see our next frame. And if we are on this frame, then we can see our previous frame, if we hide the colors layer. So this is super handy. And uh, if we don't wanna see, sometimes I only like to see the frames previous. And so if we wanna get rid of being able to see the frames after, you can select the number of frames down to zero for after and it'll get rid of that one, and you'll only see frames before, or vice versa, if you only wanna see the frames after and not before, you would select um, one frame in advance, no frames before, and now we don't see frames before, we only see frames after. You can change the opacity of the onion skin here, very simple. As a side note, sometimes if you do not see your onion skin, even when your onion skin toggle button is uh, pressed, it could be that you're in that you are in the rendered mode, or if you are in layout mode, even if you're in draw, you will not see your onion skins. 
So we've talked about coloring. Now let's talk about shading and highlighting. These are both very similar processes, so let's take a look at how they work. To do the shade layer, we'll add a layer that is above the color layer, and we'll label it shade. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take advantage of the masks. Now what masks do is basically constrains the layer, whichever layer is using the masks, to only paint in, the, uh, in or above the layer uh, that it's being masked by. So we come to the shade layer, select masks, and in the dropdown, we're gonna select color. Now if we come over here to black fill and we start drawing in our shade, we'll see that we are constrained only to inside the box, I, or inside the color. If I color outside of the color layer, nothing happens. And this is uh, well shown if we disable the mask, we can see how this works. Now in order to make this shadow look a little less harsh, we can come here and toggle the opacity down to something maybe like 0.4. And just like that, we have shadow. Now, if we want to add highlights, we're gonna follow a similar process. I usually do my highlights on top of my shadows. So I will call this layer highlights. I'm gonna come into my uh, materials tab and I'm going to add a new material. And this one is going to be called highlight. And I don't want a stroke, I just want fill and we will make this white. Now similarly, we want to enable mask and we want to uh, be masking the color. So now if we draw on the highlight layer, we will see that we uh, are once again constrained only where the highlight or where the color has been drawn. And we can once again decrease that opacity to change the intensity of the highlights. All right, next up, let's talk about how we can take use of Blender Grease Pencil's ve vector-based drawing. So if we come into drawing or edit mode, I mentioned this earlier, we can see that our drawing is made up of a bunch of different points. And just like with any kind of vertice in like 3D Blender, if we press G, we can move these vertices around. Now one super handy tool to make kind of slight alterations in the form of your Grease Pencil objects is to turn on proportional editing. Now if I select a vertice here and I press G to move, you can see it gives me the radius of effect. And if I shrink this down to something a little bit more, little bit more reasonable, we can see that now uh, the movement of that vertice will affect the vertices around it according to a fall off. So that's a super handy tool. A very similar tool is the sculpting tool. And let's take a look at the different features that that has. So if we come into our drop down here where we would normally have, or where we have object mode, edit mode, we can select sculpt mode. And here, if we select, we can change the radius, change pressure, pressure sensitivity, and also the strength. Now the main tools that I use within the sculpting mode is the push, which is the default selection, and also the pinch. And we can see what these do. Push takes and nudges the shape and the pinch I like to use uh, in case I'm trying to make like a tube a little bit more narrow or if I'm trying to make something taper, like if I wanted to make this guy's chin a little bit more pointy, I can come here and you can see that it pinches in towards that point. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at is probably one of the most useful tools in Blender and that is the interpolate mode. When you give interpolation mode two different sets of points, it'll try its best to fill in the frames in between that lead to and from each keyframe. And I'll show you guys what I mean. Now, if we come some, uh, any f amount of frames later, maybe 20 frames later, and we come in here and we use the sculpt tool. So interpolate mode works best when you don't draw any keyframes because it makes it very easy for the algorithm to determine uh, which points are transforming from where to where. So if we don't draw any new keyframes, and instead we just sculpt this, and maybe we make him look surprised. Now we can see that there's just a sharp change in the keyframe at from 19 to 20, but if we come any, to any frame in between, tab into edit mode, select the interpolate dropdown, and select sequence, 
then we'll see that it automatically has filled the keyframes in between the, it automatically filled frames between the keyframes. So if we play this, we can see the expression slowly changes from uh, happy to surprised. All right, the final part is the effects and modifiers. I'm going to try to go through this, through this as quickly as I can. If you guys have any questions on any one effect or modifier, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can make a short video about it. The first modifier is the noise modifier. This will add noise to the position of any of the points and is good for adding uh, emo quick emotion to scenes. Next we have the thickness modifier. This is really good for changing the thickness of your lines after you've already drawn them. Next up is the time offset modifier. This is good for making loops. Those are the main modifiers that I use. Let's move on to effects. Blur does exactly what you think it would. You need to go into rendered mode to see its effect. If you want more resolution, you can increase the samples. Next up is Colorize. This is used to alter the existing color of your grease pencil object. There's options like, there's preset options, but you can also choose a custom color. Next up is Flip. This allows you to mirror your object across either axis. Next is Glow. This adds a glow to your object and is very useful for fires and explosions. Once again, if you want a higher quality glow, you can increase the number of samples. Next up is Pixelate. This uh, decreases the resolution of your picture and it's kind of used ma mainly for a stylized blurring technique. Could make some cool pixel art. Rim is used to instantly add shadows or lighting. Check out my other video for how to use this one more in depth. The final effect that I use is wave distortion. This is often used for making clothes have the illusion that they're fluttering in the wind or flags. I guess for fire it could work too. In order to animate the wave moving, you actually have to animate the phase field. Alright, and that's it. That's the basics of Blender Grease Pencil. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if you guys would like to see any one field more in depth. See you next time.